Hi, my name is Pat. I'm one of the technicians here with Micro Center, and today we're going to be working with Microsoft Access 2010. Uh, now, Access is Microsoft's database software that comes with some versions of the Microsoft Office 2010 suite, uh, but can also be purchased by itself. And today we're going to be looking into how to open up Access and create a new database, and also how to create and edit a new table and some of the terminology uh, that's associated with that. So, uh, with that said, let's get started. Okay, so I'm going to open up Microsoft Access. I'm going to click on the Start button, and then All Programs. And then I'm going to expand the Microsoft Office folder and click on Microsoft Access. And that's going to open up Microsoft Access 2010. And I'm going to create a new database. Um, the database that I'm going to make is going to be for a fictional company. Um, so I'm just going to give it a name here. I'm going to call it My Company. And then I can either hit enter on the keyboard or click on create. I'm going to go ahead and click on create here. And it's going to open it up um, and there's automatically going to be a new table here. But we're going to want to edit, edit this table uh, for the appropriate fields. So I'm going to click on the view tab up here and we're going to go to design view. And that's going to enable us to edit this table and it's going to have us give it a name. And so this table I'm going to make to, that's going to contain customer records. So I'm going to get, give it a name of customers. I'm going to click OK. And uh, so we have a few things that we're going to need to fill out here. First one is the field name. And that's going to be the heading of the field um, when you're going to be entering your data. So I'm going to give this one a name of customer number. And notice here there's a little key on the left here, that's what's known as the primary key. And this is going to set it so that there can be no duplicate values in this field, in this table. Each, each customer number is going to have to be different for each customer. Now, not all tables need to have a primary key, but in a fully functional database with multiple tables, uh, lots, a lot of times you're going to want those tables to be able to relate to each other and to be able to pull data from uh, other tables. When that comes into play, uh, you're going to need a primary key in one of those tables. And that's something that I'm going to explain in a little bit more further detail in another video in this series uh, where I'm going to talk about relationships. Uh, but for now, just know that uh, if this is going to be a table that you're going to want to link up with other tables, you're going to need a primary key for it. And if this is just a table that you don't you don't think you're going to need to link up with any other tables, you can go here and click on the primary key button and that will take that away. Notice the key went away, but I'm going to keep it as it is here. And the data type field, you can select um, what you want the data to be. For this one, it's automatically set to auto number since this is the primary key. You can change it to whatever, um, but it is recommended uh, to, to keep it at an auto number for a primary key. Um, if you're going to have a lot of records and to make sure that no value is going to be duplicated um, in this field. So I'm going to keep that at its auto number and description here. This is optional. Um, this is just something to uh, help you out when you're editing the tables to know exactly what that is. But I'm going to give this a description here. customer's unique identifier. If I hit enter, it's going to go down to the next field name. And I'm going to go ahead and have a last name for our customer. And if I hit the tab key on the keyboard, it'll go right to data type, or you can just click in the data type. And for any non-primary key field, automatically it's going to go to, to text as the data type. You can go ahead and change this if you want. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it as text for now because the customer's name is obviously going to be a text field. So, in description, customer's last name. Hit enter. I'm going to give them a first name. Leave it at text. Tap over. And we're going to give them a street address. That one I'm going to leave it at text as well. Oops. 
And I'm also going to give them a city. And going going to give them a state. And suppose I want to use the two letter codes for state instead of the entire state spelled out. I can actually go down here under the field properties for size. I can change this from 255 to 2. And that's going to allow just for two characters to be populated in that field. And then we're going to do zip code. Now I can either do a text or an integer for this one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this field as text because I want to limit the size of this field to five. Because the zip code is going to be five numbers with the uh, integers. You cannot limit. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that as text. I'm going to change the field size to five. Okay. And when we're satisfied that we've got all the uh, fields that we need for this table, I'm going to go ahead and click on view here and um, it's going to allow me to do the data sheet, data sheet view so I can actually start populating my data. It's going to have me save the table first before I can um, open it up in data sheet, sheet view. And so I'm going to go ahead and say yes I want to save the table. And now we've got our first table. And notice uh, the customer name is kind of blocked off here. If you move the cursor on the edge of the field to where it kind of becomes a, a cross with two pointed arrows on either side, if you double click when it goes that, it will automatically expand to show you the whole name of the field. So now we can go ahead and populate our records. Do Smith. And remember, for the customer number, I set that to an auto integer. So once I start populating this field, it's automatically going to give it a number. So this is going to be customer number one. Okay, I can press tab. Josh. Address. Remember, for the state, I set it to only two field or two characters in the field. So if I try to enter any more, it won't allow me to. Same thing with the zip code. And if I hit enter here, it'll automatically go to the next record. And that's how we uh, edit our first table and populate the data. And if you want to create another table, easiest way to do that is to go up here to the Create tab, click on table or table design and uh, you can create your new table. Uh, so that's how we do that. Uh, feel free to uh, check out our tech support website at www.microcentertech.com for more info and walkthroughs on Microsoft Office and Windows 7 and other technical articles. And stay tuned for more videos in this series in Microsoft Access 2010.